Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to worship from Pastor Ashley's apartment. I am so glad to be with all of you in spirit, even if we can't be together physically this week, and even if worship is coming a little later in the day this week for the portion of the service where Pastor Ashley is perfectly honest. We were waiting on our friendly neighborhood Amazon delivery person to bring me this music stand so that I am not flailing about trying to hold everything. I hope for this to be a good experience for all of you and ask for your grace because this is the first time I am filming worship this way as a one pastor show and in that spirit friends let's pray together in thankfulness for this time together and as we prepare to read our scriptures holy one we are glad that you are with us everywhere that we are turning this virtual space into holy space and giving us the opportunity to make ordinary things holy music stands become pulpits trays become altars a single three flame candle becomes an opportunity to think of you our triune god and we are also grateful that wherever we are reading our scriptures from, wherever we are hearing their messages from, they are equally true and equally inspiring. We ask that you open our hearts and minds to them this day. Amen. We return to the Psalms for our first reading this week. The passage this morning, or this afternoon, contrasts the eternal constancy of God with the ethereal fleetingness of human lives. It's meant as an encouragement that whatever happens to us, God is still there and still the same and still the one in which we have our home. We read from Psalm 90, beginning at the first verse. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. Here ends our first reading. Continuing our reading in Matthew's Gospel, we pick up this week directly where we left off. Jesus is still talking privately with his disciples. Remember, if you were there, that in last week's reading, we heard the parable of the ten bridesmaids, where five brought extra oil to their lamps and five didn't. We talked about the importance of making the choice to be prepared as people of faith for delayed results and long work. Right on the heels of that parable, Jesus tells this one. 
about a rich man who goes on a journey and entrusts some of his assets to his servants in the meanwhile, and through it teaches the disciples about another choice they have to make. We read from chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not sow and gathering where you did not gather seed. So I was afraid and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Well, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers so that on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends our readings for today, wherever you are listening whenever you are, what the people hear, what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Because, friends, I am not so confident in my uh, videotaping capabilities, you are getting off easy this week and you do not have to have an interactive moment via video worship. But perhaps next week, uh, stay tuned. And if you're sitting at home watching this sermon come to you and wondering if it was heavily edited on Friday evening 
in light of the decision to not worship in person this morning? The answer is yes. Coming to you unexpectedly via video, I decided to make this message much more to the point, streamlined and simplified than if I had you in the sanctuary. Sometimes we need a brief message to carry with us into our week or from wherever we are in it because an upside of video worship is that you can watch it whenever you like, that you can sing along in the safety of your homes to the hymn I gave you at the beginning. And in editing down this message to its core, I wondered, I wondered if I should simply skip our scripture reading from Psalm 90. We are being abundantly cautious by not meeting in person, though the risk of anyone having been infected because of Jim is extremely minimal. A trip to the grocery store carries just as much risk these days. But with the pandemic hitting us a little closer to home this week, I did wonder if it was appropriate to read a psalm all about the shortness of human life and our frailty, which the psalmist likens to grasp. And I think that perhaps it's even more appropriate to read it now. Friends, we are no strangers to how quickly human lives can be taken even well before this pandemic lives ended by violence or car crashes or cancer or addiction and often far too young. We have never been strangers to that reality even and even our most celebrated eldest of elders are like the blink of an eye compared to God. The psalmist was also well aware of that reality. But rather than despairing in it, the psalmist chose to find comfort in the fact that whatever the span of our lives, God is there throughout them. Whether we finally close our eyes old and full of years, or whether we are cut short by injury or illness, God is there with us, our constant in the midst of chaos, our eternal home beyond our worldly ones. The words are as true for us as they were for the psalmist. And they were true for Jesus as well. As Jesus sits and talks to his disciples during today's gospel reading, he must be acutely aware that human lives are so very limited. He is but days away from his death on a cross, from his human life ending at 30 odd years. Jesus knows that in just a little while, the disciples will be mourning Morning about his being gone too young and too soon. 
a life swiftly withered like grass in the evening. Which makes this story, this parable of the wealthy businessman and the servants to whom he entrusts some assets, a strange one. It isn't especially comforting. It isn't about the shortness of life or the constant presence of God. Instead, like the parable of the bridesmaids, it's about delay. The businessman is delayed in his return, and the story is about what the servants were supposed to do in the meantime. One quick reminder, the word talent in this story isn't supposed to remind us of our own gifts or skills. A talent in this context refers to money. A lot of money. Just one talent was equivalent to 15 years of labor. In today's language, a single talent would be worth about $226,000. Definitely not pocket change. These servants are put in charge of more money than they ever expect to see all at once in their lifetimes. I understand why the last servant wanted to be cautious with it. Being cautious is usually a good thing. Like, it's a good thing that we are being extra safe by worshipping from home. When the businessman returns, it is the servants who took a risk, however, who, were, who are applauded. They had this huge sum of money and they took a chance to make it even bigger. Now, the moral of this story isn't that we should go to Vegas and gamble away our life savings. And it definitely isn't that we should take risks that endanger our lives. Caution is good when it comes to our finances and even better when it comes to our health. But what the moral of this story is saying is that the things that are most important to us as people of faith are meant to be a risk. They're meant to be risky. It is a gamble to put trust in God when our lives are but a moment in the divine eternity. It is a risk to put our hope in salvation. It is even more of a risk to love others, no matter what the cost to ourselves. We gamble when we choose to be kind no matter what, to pursue justice no matter what, to have faith no matter what. It's a risk, a gamble, because we don't always get to see the end. We don't know how all these risks will work out. But that, that is the life Jesus is daring followers to. The life that Jesus is daring us to. Jesus dares us to take a risk and live in faith, in hope, 
to gamble for the sake of love and kindness and justice. The dare is waiting for you every day to take a risk, take a risk, take up the dare and accept Jesus' call. Amen. In this pause, I am imagining all of you shifting in your pews as you do every Sunday as we prepare to pray together. So wherever you are, friends, church, family, I invite you to take a moment and bow your heads and to pray with me. Christ our Redeemer, you dare us to follow you with all the risks that entails. As your faithful people, we want to live what you taught. But sometimes we are frightened. Sometimes we hesitate. Sometimes the risks of faith look too big too much of a leap for our faint hearts. We ask that you forgive us when we hold our love to ourselves, when we are cold rather than kind, when we are silent rather than speaking up for justice. Help us be ready to accept the dare of faithful living and as we ask for your strength and guidance for ourselves, we ask you also to send it to others in need. To our Sexton Jim, and to all others who are battling COVID-19 themselves, that they may have swift recoveries and no lingering effects to our doctors, nurses, first responders, and to all hospital and care workers who are on the front lines, that they may find the perseverance they need to keep going. To our scientists and agencies who are developing vaccines and planning how to distribute them when they're ready, that they may find the answers they need through your grace, O oh God. And finally, to everyone who is trying to cope in these times, that we may find the rest we need in you, our divine home and that your presence may give us all that we need to keep facing tomorrow. And so wherever and whenever we are, our voices come still together to pray the way you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church family, though you are not physically in the room with me, I feel your presence all the same, and I'm grateful for our spirits worshiping together all the same. 
And just as if we were together in person, I send you out now with the same charge to dare to be faithful Christ-following people each and every day. And I send you out from wherever you are to wherever you are going with the very same blessing. Go out in peace, be strong and of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and sustainer go with you and be with you always. Amen. Blessings and peace be with you this week, friends. And until next time, I will leave you with one more hymn.